Okay, welcome everyone to our last event of the term here uh, in the Central Europe seminar at UCL CIS. Uh, we're delighted to have uh, such a wonderful turnout again. Uh, this seems to be a pattern these days in uh, in, in the new COVID reality that we actually have many more people in our events than could fit in the, the Masaryk room in, in Taverton Street. So that's, um, as I've said before, certainly a, a silver lining of the current situation. Um, thanks so much to, to Claudia, Claudia Roland at CIS for, for organizing this event, helping to organize this event, and also um, for organizational support, I'm grateful to the Slovene Lectrice at UCL CIS, Maya Ranchigai Benesh, uh, as well as the Center for Slovene as a Second Foreign Language at the University of Ljubljana. Um, and most of all, I'm grateful to our distinguished speaker who's able to join us this evening. This, this event was actually supposed to happen uh, back in March. Um, I think it was supposed to be March 23rd or something like that. Uh, and um, we, well, we, well, we had to postpone it. And uh, I'm, I'm really grateful that Marta is able to join us here this evening via Zoom and, and willing to do this, this talk via Zoom. She came all the way to London last time uh, and she had to, to, to go back uh, immediately to Trieste once lockdown started. Of course, not the worst thing in the world to, go, to have to go back to Trieste. Um, before I, I introduce her, just a few ground rules for our, our discussion this evening. Um, Marta will talk for about 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, then I will give a few minutes of commentary and, and pose a couple questions to uh, start the discussion. Marta can choose to respond to me or, or not, she doesn't have to. But then the discussion is open for, for everyone to, to ask questions. And what I'd like to happen is, uh, if you have a question, please write in the chat, I have a question, and I will, I will call on you in the order in which those come up. Uh, if you're not comfortable asking the question in person, or, or if perhaps your connection doesn't allow it, you can also type the question, and, and I will read it out. Uh, and we have until about 6.30 this evening. Uh, that's pretty much the schedule that we've been, been uh, having this term and I think we'll, we'll stick with it. So our speaker this evening is Professor Marta Verginella. Uh, she's a professor of history uh, in the Faculty of Arts at the University of Ljubljana. And she is the author of numerous studies uh, on in Slovene and Italian uh, about the Northern Adriatic region, uh, particularly in the 20th century about Trieste, uh, about the history of women and of war. I won't go through all of her publications, but uh, it's, it's a very impressive and distinguished list. I'd also like to mention that she is the PI or, uh, or has, is, is the project still going? She, she yes, yes, yes. Yes, that she, she is the PI still currently on an ERC uh, funded advanced grant project, which looks at post-war transitions in the Northeast Adriatic region, particularly through the lens of gender history. Mm -hmm. And this evening, her talk is called From Slovenka to Zhensky Svet, Slovene Feminism in Trieste Between Cosmopolitanism and the National Struggle, 1897 to 1928. So without further ado, Marta, welcome and you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, good evening to, to everyone. Uh, thank you, um, Jakub, for your invitation and now also for your uh, presentation. In this lecture, I would like to focus on Slovenka, a women journal published in Trieste between 1897 and um, 1903. I would like to explain the importance of the female network around Slovenka in English Slovenian women. I will speak first about its promoters, editors, and collaborators, and then why this first Slovene and even the first Yugoslav or, or 
uh, South uh, Slav female newspaper was published in Trieste. Trieste or Trieste, as you probably know, was multi-ethnic and multilingual town on the margin of the Slovene and South Slav world. Trieste was the third most populated city in the Austrian part of the Habsburg Empire. Its population was majority Italian speaking, but a large Slovene minority lived in the city. In 1910, Trieste had the greatest number of urban Slovene speakers in Cisleutania. 56,000 inhabitants identify as Slovene speakers. As a comparison, Ljubljana, the capital city of Carniola and the principal Slovenian cultural and political center at that time, comprised 52,000 people, mostly Slovene speaking. Secondly, I would like to focus on the Slovene women's newspaper published after the First World War in the Julian March in Italian Venezia Giulia in Slovene Juliska Kraina. I would like to present what happened in the Slovene women's circles in Trieste and Gorizia, or Thirst and Gorica in Slovene, and how a strong, strong backlash negatively affected Slovene feminism and in general or and Slovene female, fem, female activism in general after the dissolution of the Habsburg monarchy. The new border confirmed by the Rafalo Treaty in 1920 required political reorientation of women, women's activism. While the Slovenka network network was gender mixed and cosmopolitan oriented. The circle around Ženski Svet, a newspaper published in Trieste in 1924, maintained a cosmopolitan orientation in its writings, but concentrated all efforts on organizing the national defense for the large part of Slovene female population. Slovenka, the first Slovene women's newspaper began in 1897 in Trieste, where Slovene intelligentsia was numerically more modest than in Ljubljana and without an intellectual tradition, but was certainly more liberal and free-spirited. The Gorizia publisher and politician Andrei Gabersek was convinced that the first women's new newspaper should be published in Gorizia, where the Slovene journalistic and publishing tradition was stronger than in Trieste. In Trieste. However, the situation in Trieste was favorable enough for the publication of the first women newspaper. As Zofka, as a writer Zofka Kvede wrote, there are quotation, there are a lot of patriotic femininity and conscious, conscious self-sacrificing nationalist here. In general, almost more is done here than in Ljubljana for our Slovene ideals, if not with the pomp that the people of Ljubljana Count on, count on so. End of quotation. The main initiator of the women's newspapers venture was Maria Manfreda. I have a, a problem with my, okay, this is the map about littoral Carniola, and he's the first uh, new. See my picture? No. You see my picture? No. Uh, I try to share. Where is my picture? So now you see. No? Yes. Okay. Yes, we do. Okay. This is. 
Maria Springer. Uh, so the promoter, um, my, the main initiator of the women's newspaper venture was Freda Skinner, who lived in Trieste, but was a native of uh, Kobarit, Caporetto, and worked in Slovenian national circus in the Austrian littoral. In 1888, in Slovansky Svet, Slavic Council, together with Ram Podgornik, its publisher and editor in chief, she created the newspaper column Ženstvo, dedicated to the subject, publications, and discussion about women's issues. The idea for an independent women's newspaper was the result of their agreement and cooperation, and above all, the, that a fully fledged entry by women into the national body was possible only through the education and organization of. Both Maria Manfreda Skrinian and Frank Podgornik, in their defense of women's public action in and emancipation, follow the example of the Slavic world, especially the Czechs and Russian women. They try to transfer foreign examples of the women's movement into the conservative Slovenian environment and reduce the gap between the Slovenian nation and the most developed European countries regarding women's issues. Maria Skrinja Mafreda, who did not hide her self-confidence by choosing the pseudonym Zmagoslava, Victorious, launched a campaign on the pages of, uh, pages of the Slovensky Svet in favor of educating women and organizing them. She struggled for their emancipation in the belief that the must become a pillar of the nation, that, that they must become a pillar of the nation. She advocated the abolition of celibacy of female teachers, organized help for housekeepers, supported the idea of sex education, and became a great eminence of the first Slovenian newspaper. In her opinion, the Slovenian women's newspaper should be modeled on Vienna's Dastrecht. She convinced and gained the support of Gustav Gregorin, the publisher of Edinos, also one of the most important members of the Slovene political elite in Trieste. And she worked independently to formulate the newspaper's content. She offered the editorial position to Nadlišek. A young Trieste teacher whom had met in the Slavic reading room, Slovanska Čitalnica. They served on the board of the women's branch of the school uh, society of the Saint Cyril and Methodius, founded in Trieste in 1887. She followed Maritza's journalistic and literary work. Maria had read her um, Maritza's views expressed in the pages of Edith in 1888 about nationally, national femininity and women's issues. Maritza's commitment to a more active role for national women was completely in line with Maria, Maria's efforts. Both were united in the belief that the nation is not only a community of men, but also a city of women, which pleased the Slovene national leaders in Trieste, who did not ignore the fact that Maritza occupied a planned place on the Slovene literary scene. The publication of Slovenka, the beginning of January 1897, as a bi-monthly insert of the newspaper Edinos, and from January uh, 1900 as an autonomous monthly periodical, should not be seen only in the context of the modernization process of Slovenian society, i.e. as the entrance 
of the first generation of women with secondary education on the national scene and the beginning of the struggle for women's emancipation. This women journalistic project was also linked with the increasing conflict between Italian and Slovenian political elites. In Trieste, the clash between uh, the two nationalities was so heated from the 80s that it pu pushed nationally commitment, committed women in the public arena, especially on the Slovene side, providing them the opportunity to actively participate. Something similar happened on the Italian side and in particular in the Jewish circles that supported the Italian National Early Party and in which Carolina Cohen Luzzato was a pioneer of Italian professional journalism. She worked in uh, Gorizia, Gorizia. However, the favorable circumstances just mentioned would not be sufficient to justify the publication of the first Slovenian women's newspaper if Maritza Nadlišek had not lavished her perseverance, energy, competence, and knowledge on it. For the pioneer of the Slovenian women's press, it was an all out change. Maritza conceived the newspaper, selected the contents, decided the columns, identified the collaborators, and took care of its graphic design and printing at, and above all, kept up an intense and large correspondence. The graphic of her correspondence is here. These are all circle. Um, uh, with them, uh, Maritza was in this time. Maritza Nadlišek was in contact, and here are also the literary. Then I also hear literary circles in communication with Nadlišek. But I prefer that you have this pic. So, in the first year, Slovenka acquired. 508 subscribers in 1899 it had it had uh, 140 male subscribers 307 female subscribers and 61 uh, association as subscribers it evident, um, evidently satisfied needs that were beginning to emerge in Slovenian society, especially among the young, younger generations of the intelligentsia. The female question became an important question, supported at first by younger liberal democratic, so-called Mlado Slovenci, mostly pan-Slavic orientated intellectuals, after also from the social democratic intellectuals. If we analyze Slovenka from the point of view of the protagonist and the Slovenian context of the time, and also from Trieste, we can see how significant, even radical, the turning point was. In the period of the 19th to the beginning of the 20th century, in the Slovenian Habsburg environment, but also in the Habsburg one, in a broad sense, it was still necessary to demonstrate that women were not only sexual, rational, and anti-intellectual subjects. Their work was not determined, determined only by sen <clears throat> sensuality or, and sexuality, and therefore should have to submit to a hierarchy of gender. The Slovenka of Maritz was a real training ground for women's literatures, a newspaper that had mainly set itself goal of awakening the national conscience, but it was far from having, having been just that. It was also a paper that demolished dual sexual morality and it opposed the dominant ideology 
which by building on the medical and eugenic studies, advance idea of the weakness of the female body, thus justifying the limitation of the presence and activity of women to the private sphere, sphere only. It wasn't just Maritz and Adlishek as first editor who draw attention to the role of education in restabilizing the differences between the two genders. Also the same editor, Ivanka Anjic, Klemencic, uh, and other collaborators who were teachers and mostly correspondent from Carniola, followed the same orientation. The male collaborators of Slovenka who had the opportunity to tackle the female, female problem also agreed in principle with these interpretations. During the collaborations, collaboration, many of them preferred not to reveal their identity using pseudonyms. Maritz and Adlishek welcome into the group of her collaborators the liberal humanistic intelligentsia, as well as writers, poets, and commentators as established established writers, such as, for example, Anton Ashkertz, Ivan Trinko, and uh, the poet uh, Simon Gregorcic. During her involvement in Slovenka, Maritza corresponded with 41 men and 18 women. More were all engaged in Slovenka as writers from Austrian Literal, Carniola, Steyer, or were active women in Czech, Serbian, and Croat contexts. The quantity and orientation of the articles on the women question, which she wrote and published in the first three years of the newspaper, confirmed that Slovenka was, from the very beginning, the first to address the right of women to education, work, organized activities, as well as free participation in national public life. It is also significant that Maritza Nadlishak, towards towards the end of her own editorial experience, during which she, in fact, committed herself so that the newspaper would not take, quote, the erroneous path, path of women's liberation, and of course, declared herself sorry for not having received articles from feminists and socialists, although she wanted to. With the publication of the contribution of Elvira Doliner, she used a, a nickname Danica and Maritza Sternat, in her role as editor, shape both to the most radical feminism, even though she did not recognize it. Ivanka An Anjic, uh, after Klebencic, who after the resignation of Nadlišek in 1900 took over the editorial board of Slovenka, began to expose men privileges and the obstruction of equal rights of women in a much more determined way than her way than um, Marisana Bishop. She interpreted the female issue as a strictly social issue, link its struggle for emancipation to the material conditions of female independence. The political involvement of women claimed by Elvira Doliner, who among the Slovene collaborators was the one who best known the women's issue of the time and was in agreement with British and American feminists, began to receive timid support from Slovenka. Elvira Doniner contributions on free love and marriage, which appeared in 1900 on Slovenka, sparked general indignation even among the supporters of women's emancipation and last but not least, 
the disapproval of Maritza Nadlishek herself. The conquest of the right to vote by women, the education of girls and women to an independent life were among Slovenka's, Slovenka's core demands. The detailed correspondence from the International Congress held in Paris in November 1900 on the condition and rights of women, always as on similar initiatives in the monarchy and in the world, confirmed an even greater openness of the women's newspaper and highlighted its tendency to overcome the narrow Slovenian landscape to connect with other women's movements and their representatives. Ivanka Anjic a shift in the orientation of the magazine from a liberal to a more social democratic orientation, encouraged by Vladimir Jelošek, the Croatian boyfriend of the Slovenian writer Zofka Kveder, she planned to transform Slovenka into a Yugoslav feminist periodical. Ivanka tried to translate the pan-Slavic orientation of the first editor into a concrete, in a pro-Yugoslav feminist journalistic project, but was and successful also due to the break in her friendship with Zofka Kveda, the most, at this time, the most famous Slovenian writer. The two friends were not divided by differences of view on feminism, but by personal grudges. After five years of operation, when Slovenka was compared to the Berlin magazine Die Frau for the split and firm way in which it, uh, it had begun to fight for women's rights, the newspaper had to few collaborators and subscribers to continue successfully. There was a shortage of female apostles, as Zofka Kweder wrote. There was a lack of readers, and not only in Trieste, the ranks of supporters were too modest and few women were ready to support the feminist journalistic project. Also small was the male intelligentsia who believed in the need for female emancipation and grace the importance of the female journalistic project born in Trieste. This is the short life on, the, on this uh, female newspaper Slovenka remains a small journalistic miracle and remained a benchmark for the next female journalistic experience. Now about this second journalistic uh, experience, about second uh, case of study, Ženski Svet, in English, Women's, uh, women's World, um, about the political context in which this newspaper was born. In the territory of the former Austrian littoral, which was at the point given a new Italian name, Bezia Giulia, individual political and national players quickly ripped the social fabric uh, after the end of the First World War and the disintegration of the Habsburg monarchy. monarchy. Especially significant organizational impetus was detected among the Slovene population, which was opposed to the new Italian occupation administration. The fear that the Italian authorities would take away Slovene's nationalists, which had been granted under Austria, became a, le a lever, lever for diverse political activities and social uh, organizing. Maria Kmet, a Slovene teacher in Trieste, provided a detailed depiction of the enthusiasm at the end of the war, but also disappointed that followed the Italian occupation of the Austrian literal. I quote here. 
I will be happy when I can, I can call in public at the top of my voice that done Austria. At that point, I was allowed to do that. I returned to Trieste, wore the Slovene tricolored flag in public and was repeatedly disappointed when I was attacked by Italians and indeed hit on the head with a stick by some men. We made large and small flags in the classrooms for the reception of English men. We waited for them day after day. We were looking forward to their arrival and made large scale plans. I argued with a housekeeper who learned from influential Trieste magnates that Trieste would be, would be occupied by Italians who would go as far as Tatets. I was outraged and rejected her claims, saying that it was nothing but, Ital but wishful thinking until that unforgettable sad day came. End of quote. This wrote uh, Maria Kmet in uh, um, her um, book. Uh, Moya Porta, biographical uh, book, uh, mm, Moya Porta. In those first and post war months, when the Italian authorities started to set up new in institutional frameworks, the Slovene populations rebuilding its social networks. Along with restored pre war cultural, professional, and economic societies, new ones came into being including women's societies. This happened in the period when the premises of the most important Slovene organization were, were targeted by fascist arsonists and demolished. The arson attack on Narodni Dom in Trieste place in July 1920 the hat quarters of Slovene and also more generally Slavic societies, the building of Jadranska Banka and provide, provide privately owned shops there were attacked and destroyed. The physical violence escalated when Benito Mussolini came to power. So that the chronology of the fascist violence can be put on a a pair with the chronology of women's activities organizations. The society Sploshno Slovensko Žensko Društvo, General Slovene Women's Society, was established in Gorizia in September 1922. The society Žensko Dobrodelno Udruženje, Women's Charitable Association, was found, founded in Trieste the same year. Kostetna Zveza Cultural Association was established in Gorizia in 1920 and its girls section started its operation in 1924. In fact, the main goal of the expedited formation of women's girls circus throughout the littoral was to include women members in the national defense activities. In the period when Italian authorities began to close individual Slovene institution and institutions and schools, women's theater groups and queers spread sociability as a mark of Sloveneness among the female population. The end of the First World War brought new developments also to the sphere of women's journalism in Trieste and Gorizia. Jadranka was published in Trieste and Slovenka in Gorizia in 1920. Both women's periodicals were discontinued in 1923 in order to support the publication of a more ambitious journalistic project, namely Ženski Svet. This periodical was first published in Trieste the same year. It was in initiated by the charitable society Žensko Dobrodelno Udruženje, which had been established in Trieste the year before. 
but was conceived as a magazine for whole Slovenian space. The new wave of women's activities in societies and journalism is to be understood as a continuation of women's charitable activities during wartime, but also, but also as a consequence of the antifined politicization of women in the last year, year of the war. And here is, okay, this is the first Nam Slovenka, but this is the first number of Jenski Svet. Antonia Slavik, one of the initiator of Jensko Dogodelno Udruje, Jenski Svet, was during the war the heart and soul of Slovene women's charitable activities in Trieste. She was active in the women's branch of the Cyril and Methodio Society and in the Triestine, Triestine Red Cross. The editor in chief of Jovinsky Svet, Paula Kochevar, taught the Cyril Methodio School and was actively involved in the operation of Lutsky Order. Uh, social democratic um, society. Her, mem her memoirs give a very detailed description of why the society and the paper came into being already in the period of fascist terror. I quote, we must create a form of legal assistance. Let us found a charitable organization. Fascists made a lot of that. Many Slovenes lost their income. Our poor families do not get the same support as Italian ones. School children in Svetiakov, this is a quarter, was a very, very worker quarter in uh, Trieste. Uh, the school children in Svetiakov are in need of everything. The women's branch of the school society cannot do everything. Several weeks later, on 8 November, the founding general assembly of the new society Žensko Dobrodelno Druženje took place. The society was headed, headed by Antonia Slavik and Milka Martelanz was its secretary, end of, of, of quote. The society consisted of a charitable section which gathered means for supporting families and children and a handiwork section that took care of sewing and tailoring nationally, national embroidery. As wrote Paula Kocevar, their courses were also a delightful, a delightful meeting point where they could hear only Slovene words and occasion, occasionally a Croatian one, but also learn the uh, Slovene and court terminology. Paula Kocheva mentioned that she was somewhat reluctant to accept her editorial role, mostly since other committee members had a different work view. She put her social democratic and feminist ideas aside and gave into the rule of the middle ground in the terms of accentuating the national consciousness and fostering hidden, hidden Slovenians and Yugoslav Dom. Quote, um, I listened to such a similar instruction, got lost in, in thought and remained silent. I could shadow fell on my horizon which was once so bearing on migrant plans and independent outlook. I could not contradict our people's position. It was too bleak. I had to give end of quotation. In fact, the post-war Slovene women's organizational enthusiasm was associated with politicization, experienced by women at the end of her. Since many Slovene women in Trieste, in Trieste and Gorizia supported the May Declaration of 9-11 and the Yugoslav state, but they 
also shared the general belief that only mass and national efforts can prevent the realization of the fascist, whose goal was to Italian Italianize the entire border area. Despite their adeptness at evading the fascist legislature, the major Slovene women's organization had been removed by 1928. And since, and since fascist authorities prohibited any Slovene language press, the editorial office of Zhensky Svet was recollated to Ljubljana in 1929. And now the conclusion. If Slovenka was an expression of women's emancipation and transcendence of those cultural activities of women, which were only in the faction of the nation, Zhensky Svet was a project which had to put the fight for women's rights on the secondary track and act predominantly in support of women national activities. The fact that both newspaper projects with a considerable impact for the whole Slovene speaking space were created in Trieste in Thurs, is certainly worth an in-depth historiographical inquiry. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Marta, for that, that fascinating story about Slovene women's journalism and its evolution in Trieste between multinational Austria-Hungary and the Italian nation state. Uh, I think, uh, and now for a, a, few, a few minutes of commentary from me before we open things up, uh, I think this paper uh, highlights several things. First of all, it, it reminds us what a decisive place Trieste and the Upper Adriatic were in the 20th century. Uh, this was a decisive contested borderland region that was also a major theor theater of war, uh, in, particularly in the First World War, uh, but also in, in the Second World War. Uh, you know, this was, this was uh, uh, an area that was coveted by Italian nationalists for a long time promised to them uh, in the secret 1915 Treaty of London. Uh, then the, the border was established in 1920, the Rapallo Treaty, which gave Italy a, a lot of contemporary Slovenia, uh, but that wasn't of course enough. Um, the, the Italians uh, harbored resentment from the wartime that they hadn't gotten enough uh, it was it was a mutilated victory in their in their eyes, uh, La Vittoria Mutilata, and then this area of Trieste became kind of a staging ground for fascist dreams of Mediterranean Empire in the Second World War, which of course then came crashing down. It was a front line of the Cold War, and and so on. And actually, Marta's project has has a. Uh, her project website has a terrific animation of all the border changes. And I recommend that everyone have a look at it. It, it has great dramatic accompanying music too. Um, this, this area was also kind of a hothouse for two of 20th century Europe's most consequential national movements, that is Italian fascism and, and Yugoslavism really. And then it highlights, I think uh, the sort of, um, character of Trieste as, as a sort of space in between, as an open question, as a place that's, that's uh, meaning uh, in, in Europe still continues to be debated and uh, fought over. It was of course Austria-Hungary's main port city, but um, it's questionable whether Austria-Hungary really was ever gonna become a maritime power. Uh, there's actually some interesting um, recent scholarship on this subject. Uh, the, the Italians, of course, desperately wanted Trieste before the, the, the First World War, then they got it. Um, they, they, they let it fall into neglect, though. It was, um, it, was, it, was uh, not, it was not one of their sort of premier ports and, and, and it wasn't invested in so, so, so heavily as other parts of the country. Um, 
you know, who, who does this city belong to? Marta mentioned that it's a multi, it was a multinational city, still is to some uh, smaller extent. Like many Eastern Adriatic port cities, uh, it was uh, home to a mostly Italian speaking kind of urban population, but surrounded by a, 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 a Slavic speaking hinterland. And now, you know, Trieste is, is again a kind of geopolitical question uh, as it's been targeted for, for integration into China's Belt and Road Initiative as a part of opening, opening up um, or integrating Western markets further into um, uh, uh, China's uh, economic reach. So that's kind of, that's, that's sort of a, a couple comments about, about the, the place of this, this lecture then. I think it also, this, this paper also reveals the rich variety of Slovene intellectual life uh, in the early 20th century. You know, this is not just, not just a nation of, of small, a small nation of, of Catholic peasants as, as the sort of stereotype propagated by Marx and Engels went of, of non-historic nations in, in East Central Europe. Um, in, incidentally, that, that um, idea of a kind of a small Catholic peasant nation was, was made into a virtue by, this, by the largest Slovene political movement at the time, um, the, the Katoliška Narodna Stranka, which then became the Slovenska Ludska Stranka in, in 1905. Um, but this shows the importance of urban life in, in, in Slovene um, intellectual development. Uh, and even more so the importance of Trieste than Ljubljana. Uh, it also shows, I think, the importance of the kind of multinational context and international connections for the Slovene national movement and Slovene feminism. Journalistic models are taken from Berlin and from Vienna, uh, but also models of women's involvement in public life are, are borrowed from, from uh, fraternal or, or sororal Slavic peoples like, like uh, the Czechs and the Russians, uh, and also some intellectual inspiration from Anglosphere feminism. I think the paper also shows uh, the, the remarkable kind of um, shrewdness and, and adaptability of women's activism in this era. Far from being kind of detached idealists, these, these women were both daring and pragmatic particularly in the case of Zhensky Svet, they, they defied the threat of fascist violence, um, but at the same time adapted their own ideals to what they found to be uh, the key demand of the hour, which was defense of the whole Slovene nation in the upper Adriatic region. And that, that, that brings me to uh, a, a small comment on your paper's argument. Um, you frame this, this story as a shift from cosmopolitanism to nationalism. And indeed it's kind of in the, it's, it's highlighted in, in the title of your paper. Uh, and this shift was a, a conscious choice and uh, something of a sacrifice for Zhensky Svet's editor in chief, Paula uh, Hochevar, whose own political instincts were, were social democratic and and, and feminist. But in her view, the new approach had to be adopted under the circumstances. And it's undeniable uh, that the Slovene women's movement faced an entirely new set of challenges after the war and with Trieste's incorporation into the Italian nation state. But I wonder if this isn't uh, more of a story of two distinct Slovene nationalisms. Uh, and what I mean is, is that you, you have a, a, a sort of progressive modernizing nationalism represented by, by Slovenka around the, the turn of the century. And here's a, a, a handy, handy little book uh, edited by Marta Virginella about this, about this uh, uh, newspaper. Um, this kind of progressive nationalism is about the enfranchisement of women it's about the rejection of bourgeois separate spheres and, and the idea of a, a, an essential feminine nature. Um, and I think you, you kind of, uh, your, your evidence points to the sort of nationalist aspect of this 
Slovenka project when when uh, Nadlišek talks about her commitment to to national women and talking about the nation as a city a city of women. Uh, and it's also striking how much these uh, Slovenka editors and their kind of intellectual fellow travelers are embedded in, in a kind of landscape of, of uh, uh, nationalist organizations, including the, the, the Slovanska Čitalnica. I think it's also worth noting that the models that they're dealing with of, of kind of Czech and, and Russian women, or certainly Czech women, I won't speak about Russian women, but these are extremely nationalist organizations, mostly at the time. Uh, it's, it's interesting that, that uh, the first woman elected to public office, I believe, in, or maybe the only woman elected to public office in, in Austria-Hungary at a time when women, of course, couldn't vote is Božena Vikova Kunjetitska, Czech woman who, who becomes a deputy to the Bohemian Diet in 1912. And she represents the, um, the National Free Thinking Party, which is a pretty, pretty hardcore uh, Czech nationalist party. And, and also it's, it's the Czech national socials, the sort of extreme nationalists who are most outspoken for women's enfranchisement uh, at this time. But I think the, the, the sort of nationalism that we see in Slovenka is, is um, closest to a sort of social democratic idea of national cultural autonomy, right? And this was, this was a, a kind of Austro-Marxist idea that was circulating around the turn of the century and became basically part of Austrian social democracy's official program. And it was a Slovene, of course, as you know, uh, Edwin Kristan, who first articulated this, and then it was taken up by, by Karl Renner and, and Otto Bauer um, and theorized in, in detail. And then, and then you have a sort of different nationalism with Jenski Svet, which, is, which in some ways sort of mirrors um, the fascists in, in, in a weird way. I mean, it's, it's focused on the family, right? And, and a lot of the activists have this background in charitable work during the war, helping women and children, uh, I mean, you didn't say this, but it almost sounds like the women as mothers of the nation and um, uh, uh, envisioning a very different role for women in the national community. So that's, that's my short comment. I, I was privileged enough to, to see this paper before Marta uh, read it uh, this evening. And, um, and, and I, based on it, I have a couple questions also that I'd like to pose before I open the floor up. And the first is um, related to this related to this this idea that there are two different nationalisms at work. How much do you think these different currents in the Slovene women's movement reflect what's going on in sort of male-dominated Slovene politics at the time? I mean, is is are there different dynamics, or or is it a kind of women's sort of parallel version of this and so on. And then, and then I, just a small question about subscription numbers. You, you, you have figures for uh, uh, Slovenka in your paper, but not for Zhensky Svet. I'm just wondering what, how, how widely that circulated. And if, if these papers were kind of able to reach the mass audience that they, that they intended to. And then finally, um, how does this study fit into your, into your broader research project, this, this ERC uh, funded project? So um, that's it from me. I don't know if Marta, if you'd like to respond a little bit to those before we, before we move on. Now. Thank you for your um, comments and uh, all commenter. Um, I agree with um, all you uh, uh, Underline, uh, but uh, about question, um, I think that um, the political culture of the first educated uh, generation of women was um, quite similar. Uh, uh, the political um, knowledge and also behavior in the 
men in men uh, uh, associations. Um, but in Slovenia, we find a very small difference, especially uh, regarding the relationship with Italian culture and Italian also society. Uh, Marica Medlišek wrote an um, uh, article about, uh, so she was, she was um, uh, involved in, in also in the uh, um, translation of Italian authors. And uh, we find in all this newspaper uh, one effort to translate Italian writers. Um, um, Bo in both in both uh, newspapers, uh, Marica Medlišek um, wrote that why why this so she she demanded herself why this conflict was so strong between uh, Italians and Slovene. Um, um, nevertheless, both has one the same uh, enemy, Austria. No? And this is no, this meaning was not diffused in the, um, in the Trieste uh, Slovene political um, environment. It was very, very special, uh, very exceptional. This is one uh, small trace of uh, autonomy meaning, political meaning. Um, uh, the second question, uh, yes, I don't um, uh, give you a number of uh, subscribers. In the first, uh, in the 1923, Zhensky Svet um, had 2,000, uh, two, more than 2,000, um, thousand five hundred subscribers but in 1928 around 18,000 subscribers and uh, this newspaper remained very important also after um, the immigration of all uh, board and the um, also um, all um, all um, editing team uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, Zinski Svit remained the principal uh, female newspaper also in the 40 years. Um, so um, at the beginning was more literal newspaper, but then uh, after uh, this uh, emigration in Ljubljana became also uh, a very important Slovene newspaper. Um, the first question was, uh, this was two, 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 yes, about my work. Um, I choose this, uh, this issue, but uh, naturally my um, inquire, my research in this field is uh, more large. And yesterday I, I was in archive and I was very happy because after Two months I returned in um, in, in uh, a Trieste archive, and I uh, found a very interesting report, um, Italian reports um, wrote after uh, November 1918. I check very quickly uh, if uh, any report mention women. I didn't find any mention. And this is very interesting that uh, the authorities um, observe uh, in general uh, the male population and not the female population. And I think I, I have this, uh, I pose this, uh, um, I, I elaborate this a hypothesis that uh, this lack of attention at the female population create a space for this uh, very strong female activity after 1920. 
this is my uh, um, I must still uh, work with this piece uh, with this um, um, agreement but I hope that uh, I found new uh, data about it um, but in more generally naturally I um, I, I use all data to understand what happened after the Italian occupation in uh, uh, Austrian littoral. And with my colleagues, we studied uh, the psychiatric uh, uh, files, uh, um, um, the, what happened in the work in the, um, uh, in, in the different, uh, uh, lab in the different part of labor market and so on. Thank you. So we, we have some questions coming in from the audience. First is, is a question written into the chat by uh, from Susanna Vuljevic. And she wants to know a little bit more about uh, these women's connections to non-Slav feminists at the time. Uh, if you could maybe comment briefly on that. Yes, um, um, we were, uh, we, uh, I and my colleague, because also this book about, uh, about Slovenka uh, was born um, as collective uh, uh, work. Uh, we studied um, Maritza correspondence and um, this correspondence, it's not complete. And for this reason, we could uh, reconstruct uh, the contact with the Slovenka as a newspaper, with uh, um, especially with uh, um, Praga circles. And but we don't have um, more documents about them. We know that uh, uh, Maritza Nadlišek uh, was uh, uh, very attentive of all. Um, informations about all events um, which happened in Prague uh, in the uh, women's circles. And um, uh, Slovenka mentioned all uh, important um, facts uh, uh, and... Uh, uh, Sorry, I think, I think the, uh, the, the, the question is more about um, feminists in, in German speaking countries and, and in sort of France and Britain and things like that. Yes. So, um, uh, no, so Maritza, Maritza Nadlišek, Nadlišek uh, wasn't in, in personal contact with uh, 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 America, British, uh, only uh, Elvira Dolinar uh, um, uh, uh, had this uh, personal contact. Um, also, uh, Ivanka uh, Anz Anzic um, was born in other Yugoslav um, and speci especially Croatia uh, and uh, Croatian um, women activist but uh, we don't fi find found um, correspondence or um, or um, personal uh, personal um, files about them thank you uh, Olivia hello well um, would you like to un unmute yourself and ask a question sure thank you Thank you, Marta, for um, your really interesting presentation. Um, I noticed that many of the women you introduced us to today are also noted as uh, translators. And you mentioned that Nadlišek Bartol also sought to translate Italian authors. Um, I wondered if you could maybe tell us a little bit more about any instances of translation informing the work of these women and these publications. Um, I'd just be really interested to hear a little bit more about the role of translation in, in their lives. Um, yes. Um, Maritza Nadlišek uh, translated a lot. 
from especially from uh, Russian uh, Russian literatures, um, but um, but also from other Yugoslav um, area, and uh, from um, and translated also from Italian, but not so uh, not a lot. Um, she looked at Arthur as um, Ada Negri, other, other um, female writers. This is interesting that uh, uh, she translated specially um, other female writers. And, but not, not uh, so uh, I, I remember now the, the letters, uh, the letter who was written by Ivan Trinko and uh, this was um, a priest um, uh, who lived in uh, in Friuli, in the part where lives the Vin uh, population, and um, she, he was very close friend of Maritza, and he insisted the Maritza uh, must be translate one Catholic. Uh, Author, no important uh, uh, Italian um, writer, female writer, and Maritza refused. This is a case that Maritza was very independent in this um, uh, um, chose choose two uh, other authors, especially female. And uh, no, naturally, Maritza wasn't a, a very feminist uh, activist. No. But uh, she was very determined, and uh, she was. Um, I I love to mention um, her um, um, her fight against uh, uh, the uh, Catholic authority in uh, uh, Slovene environment. This was uh, the this uh, Catholic author authority. Catholic authority was um, Anton Machnic, a very conservative uh, um, uh, um, clerical uh, man. And uh, um, she was very, very young, but she polemized in very strong way with, her, with him. And um, okay, she uh, didn't support a very feminist uh, um, uh, meaning, but she was in fact feminist with with uh, this uh, uh, behavior, with this uh, um, with his uh, with, uh, sorry with her behavior, with her um, um, activity. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we have a, a question written into the chat from Isidora Grubachki, and and she's she's asking about how how you would compare um, how would you compare well I'll just read it out uh, related to your argument about related to your argument about the post war backlash in the Trieste context. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on about how Ljubljana's feminism would compare with Trieste in terms of this backlash, or in other words, in terms of continuities and discontinuities before and after the war. So um, the uh, Ljubljana's feminism was linked with Trieste feminism after uh, Slovenka experience, this is clear. And uh, also, um, uh, also Zhensky Svit uh, was born in Trieste, but was a product from uh, uh, was a product from Ljubljana's feminism and Trieste uh, Trieste's feminism, uh, because um, um, yesterday I I, I uh, checked the collaborators of Zhensky uh, uh, Svit and part of their of their um became from from Ljubljana and um naturally the position of Ljubljana feminism in 20 in 20s was very different uh, uh, from the uh, position of Trieste feminism in at the same time 
uh, because the um, uh, Paula Hocheva, uh, Maritza uh, Nadlishek uh, lived in fear that the carabinieri arrived in the school, in the home, that uh, um, uh, that uh, they passed part of uh, their life in uh, jail or in internment. So the, the situation was very, very different. And um, after the immigration of Paula Hocheva and the others, uh, the Ljubljana's feminism was linked with Trieste feminism. But I think that remain one difference in the radical meaning, the, 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 um, in the political radical meaning. Uh, because um, I analyze uh, the interview of many people um, who was a daughter of um, uh, or uh, son uh, from people who emigrated from Austria, literal in Carniola or in Ljubljana um, area. And I thought uh, uh, this radical meaning because this son and daughter reached at the beginning of the uh, Second World War the partisans group. And we found this linked between the experience of their um, um, relatives or parents in Trieste or Gorizia, and then the, the continuity in a certain way, the continuity in a certain way in Ljubljana. I don't know, Isidora, if I found it you, but I think that this is a topic for our uh, common uh, inquiries. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Um, we, we still have over 10 minutes left for questions. If anyone, anyone would like to ask Marta a question or raise a point, Well, 65 people without questions. I find that hard to believe. Uh, <laughs> Maybe because my English, it's not so good. And for this reason, <laughs> I just I just got another question in here um, on uh, to me directly. Uh, and I'll send it to you, Marta. How, how, how did these women fare in World War One or World War Two? Excuse me. Um, a, a lot of them. I know you you showed um you showed their their uh life dates uh when you showed their pictures and uh, certainly some of the key editors and activists here did live through the second world war so what uh what was that like for them so um the most young young um uh were partisans. Now I I I could I could uh, mention Mara Samsa. Uh, uh, she was collaborated with um, she collaborated uh, with Jenski Svet and was also a partisan teacher uh, during the war. Uh, but um, if uh, I have uh, if I studied very uh, in depth. Um, uh, Slovenka, I must still uh, analyze Zhensky Svet and all network in uh, Zhensky Svet. Now I am concentrate, I am uh, concentrate uh, this first part of um, um, post-war period because I think that um, these three, four years um, are very important to um, to understand what happened with uh, uh, female uh, population, because I uh, analyzed also another uh, newspaper, which is Skilis, and in this newspaper I found a lot of data about um, about uh, female teachers, about uh, uh, their activism. 
but also about very radical meaning. Um, I could uh, quote um, one uh, um, one uh, uh, article in them. One um, woman with pseudonym wrote that it's a time to fight with uh, um, violence. No, and I think that radical, this radical uh, female meaning, it's not so diffuse uh, at the beginning of the 20 uh, around uh, Austrian literal and also other in Europe. Um, maybe the author is, um, um, is a um, friend of uh, Srečko uh, Kosovel, Fanica Obit. I think that uh, uh, could be the author of this article could be funny a bit because funny was very really um, radical in his political meaning at the beginning of the 20 and uh, frequented um, um, uh, um, teacher school in Tolbin and uh, she organized a strike as a student and she left the school because absolutely against the Italian and fascist policy. So a very uh, radical um, oriented uh, girl um, uh, who was um, who, who was active in the um, anti-fascist movement also in the second part of the 20, but uh, she must uh, left the most important position in this um, uh, movement to other uh, male uh, uh, friends and in, in, in her particular case at her uh, boyfriend. Okay, um, and, and then we have a question from Maria uh, Cravagna that's written in, in the chat here. Uh, and that is, if you could comment on whether there was a connection between these female journalists in Trieste and, and female artists in Trieste, if there was any kind of... Uh, yes. Um, um, Marisa Nadlishek in, uh, in her memoirs uh, mentioned uh, her friendship with uh, two Italian artists, but uh, I didn't find any, any information about them. I studied also naturally the Italian, um, Italian uh, female uh, networks, but no contact uh, uh, was um between the slovene slovenka uh, networks and this liberal national uh, um italian uh, female uh, activism because uh, also the also the um uh, the intellectual as um, martinuzzi uh, this is very interesting um, activist. Uh, uh, she was at the beginning was uh, liberal nationalistic oriented, and uh, she uh, she edited um, uh, one newspaper, Propatria. But in this uh, newspaper, I didn't find any article about women, about uh, uh, female issue. But at the, in the second part of um, uh, uh, her life, uh, Giuseppina Man uh, Mart uh, Martinuzzi left the liberal, um, uh, national liberal uh, context and uh, she became a uh, um, social democratic oriented uh, woman. And uh, she wrote a lot in the second part, but uh, she maintained one very Austro-Marxist orientation that the female question will be resolved with the social question. 
And for this reason, also in one another an environment, she didn't uh, uh, develop a relationship with Slovene, uh, um, Slovene um, circles, especially with Paula Hochever and uh, also uh, Ivanka Anzic. An Anzic. Uh, they frequented um, other social democratic uh, um, politicians as Edwin Christian, no? but also others who lived in this time in Trieste, uh, especially Zofka Kveder. Zofka Kveder was, was an arti artist, uh, and uh, she spent uh, um, uh, a time also, one, one time also, uh, she was also, I think for three, four months uh, uh, in Trieste, she lives uh, also in Trieste. Um, but she was linked with Maritza and others and um, only in Slovene, uh, also she lived only, only in Slovene, environment. Um, so this intellectual and also artist world, Slovene artist world was very, very small. For this reason, in this time, we could, um, we could mention Maritza Nadlišek as writer, as teacher, as uh, intellectual, but, and others, others teachers, yes, as, um, um, Ponikvar, uh, they were also um, correspondent of Slovenka, but wasn't very important in the artist artist life or in the artist circles. Uh, in generally, um, in the nine in the second uh, part of nineteenth century, the. Uh, artistic world in Trieste wasn't so diffuse, wasn't so large. No, we have naturally uh, a big name uh, uh, at the end of the 19th century, the beginning Italo Svevo, after uh, in Trieste lived uh, James Jones, Joyce, and but uh, this artistic and after we have also important uh, painter, but at this time, um, especially in the Slovene environment, um, the artistic life wo was minor. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I think, um, let me look at the chat one more time. I don't see any uh, final questions coming in and we are just coming up to 6.30 p.m. here in, in, in London, which is when we usually adjourn. And uh, usually we, we now adjourn to the back of the Masaryk room for a glass of wine or two <laughs> and uh, continuation of the, of the discussion. But um, I guess we'll all just have to log off Zoom and help ourselves to the, to the, to the wine cabinet in our, in our homes. Uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. Thank you in, again to Marta Virginella for a fascinating talk. Uh, it was great to, to, to have you present in this seminar series, even if um, we weren't able to, uh, to, to, to have it in the Masaryk room. Um, this, as I said at the very beginning, marks the end of our, our series for this term, but we'll be back next term uh, with a series of exciting events in the Central Europe seminar series. I think the first one is on the 26th of, of January. We'll uh, be discussing a new book about the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth by our very own Professor Richard Butterwick Pawlikowski. Um, so maybe some of you can join us then. Uh, Okay, well, wishing everyone a, a, a happy and healthy holiday season. And uh, thank you again for joining us. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.